What's going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. We have Grand Party here of course. This is going to be day one and day two combined together. It was getting really late when uh, when day one debuted. Make sure to always, you know, when, when Grand Party starts you need to get your games done as soon as you possibly can because you only have, I think it's like eight hours before the reset happens. I still don't understand why they don't give us an extra day due to that. It's a little bit of a weird decision but, you know, we've dealt with it for quite a while now. So in this season, the the, the rule set does feel a little oppressive, I feel, in the way where, you know, int and strength are debuffed pretty heavily, where int get really big special CT decrease, and strength get pretty heavy attack down, and they kind of offset that as well by making dex really good this season, so dex are receiving level 5 CT increase, and, you know, the best teams against dex are going to be the strength squads or health cut teams. And, you know, if you're going to be using a health cut team, it'd be probably with some strength units, or it's going to be, you know, like the slashes, for example. And, you know, you've got characters like Odin being strength, receiving attack down, or like S-Hawk being an int character, getting special CT decrease. So, th they've made it really interesting this season. I do think the deck squads are going to be a little bit threatening to go up against. And then, of course, you've got, like, Psy teams and stuff that are they're actually going to be pretty solid this season as well. Due to the fact that the uh, the, the Psy units will get level 10 HP increase, so they're going to be pretty tanky to deal with. And then also you've got Cerebral units getting an attack increase. So I don't know if Cerebral are really ever going to be that great this season. There, there's a couple of decent units in Cerebral squads, but I think the team as a whole just isn't very cohesive yet. And while I do think that the addition of the newly introduced Rumble Rare Recruit, Jaguar D. Saul, is actually a pretty solid unit, but I don't really think it's going to ultimately make cerebral teams like top tier or anything they do have some good units though as i said you know characters like nami and karina you have the new jaguar d soul the new nami or also the new robin they do have interesting mechanics i suppose you have some of the vegapunk characters that have come out like specifically atlas i think is very good but of course the issue with that is that the int characters get debuffed heavily so it is annoying that they are buffing cerebral this season yet they also go ahead and debuff uh the the int characters because there are some pretty good int and cerebral characters but I think due to the oppressiveness of the 10th anniversary Gear 5 Luffy over the last couple of seasons, I think that's probably partly why they've gone ahead and nerfed the int characters this season because some of those int units are pretty strong and int, and uh, int being really good with s hawk as well s hawk being such a powerful powerful character and despite the fact that he does receive some special ct decrease this season i still think he's going to be a pretty solid choice this season either way so anyways uh, for day one having a look at the squads that i have uh this is just something i was testing out just to see how it would kind of go due to this season giving buffs to grand party burst skills for characters that are psi cerebral so shanks being the 10th anniversary unit came out he's got a very interesting burst skill and being able to reduce the restriction or the uh the actual requirement for his skill and also giving him an additional burst skill so you can use shanks's burst skill five times this season that's pretty crazy right and it does do a pretty good amount of damage. It gives your squad a, a, a nice set of stat bonuses as well. So I do think it's a pretty solid option. But after seeing what I did in day two, I don't think I'm going to be going back to Shanks anytime soon. So now we can go ahead and move on to the secondary uh, secondary game of day number one here. So I'm up against uh, this random team. So we already pretty much know there's not really much to talk about here. This is going to be a pretty easy victory without too many hassles. As you know, when you have these random teams with not really much synergy there's not much they can do against you. There is going to be the off chance when you're up against a randomly generated team that they'll have like S-Hawk or Nami Karina on their side of the field. And, you know, those characters are just annoying by themselves because of their the actual design of the unit. And, you know, that can obviously cause a bit of issues. But, you know, most of the time up against a randomly generated squad, you should have a pretty easy time going against it if your team has actual synergy, like what we're seeing here with the quick slasher driven powerhouse kind of squad that i have 
Um, this is a team I was trialing out. I don't think Quick is going to be that good this season due to the fact that Dex is heavily buffed and Strength is heavily nerfed. I just don't think you're going to be seeing that much, uh, you know, like Strength characters to really abuse your Quick squads against. So I would probably say that going and building a Quick team is not going to be the most efficient way forward. And also, after using this Slasher team, with 10th anniversary shanks in it, I definitely miss having Legend Cracker on the squad to give additional special CT to everyone. Despite the fact that I do think shanks is actually really good, but I do think that this shanks is going to be a better fit for cerebral teams because of the support that he can provide to those squads. I just don't think slashes ultimately need what shanks provides. Despite him being pretty good, I much prefer having Cracker to give you know the additional special CT to the rest of the team, making Sanji and Zoro being able to give the uh, the haste and then just absolutely mowing down opponents with s hawk and roger whitebeard And then we go ahead and move on to the final match of day number one. So we're going to be using our Psy team first up against the opponent's once again randomly generated team with a lot of low cost characters. So not really too much to worry about here, but this is going to be the first GP season where Wano Law 6 Plus is going to be available. And uh, I'm really, really happy to actually pivot back to using some Psy Free Spirit, you know, despite not them really receiving much. Uh, like in terms of buffs overall but uh being able to just go back to this and lore is just a nice addition i suppose because with that six plus his rumble ability does give some additional attack bonuses so he's just ultimately going to make your side characters hit harder against opponents um but he's also got a better special where it now will do even more damage and the special can now remove half stats on your side of the field whereas before he could only remove stuff like paralysis special bind action bind stuff like that and now he can remove half stats which is just going to make him even better than what he already was and buffing his special to now be from 2200 damage to 3500 is also a really nice touch so he's just going to get more use and be a better a better teammate for your Psy focus teams and of course we're going to finish off this game with our OP slasher team with 10th anniversary shanks <laughs> So moving on to day number two, I decided to completely rebuild the teams that I was going to be using this time around. I didn't use a free spirit team in yesterday in, in day one's teams. And I feel like I really just wanted to go back to using Free Spirit because Free Spirit itself doesn't really receive any debuffs. The only debuffs this season you have to worry about are Int and Strength. And for the Free Spirit team, we, there's no Int on it, so it's not really that bad. Strength obviously has a little bit of debuff, I suppose, with Otama, but it's an attack debuff, so it's like, you know, whatever. So I don't really have to worry about that at all. But I did opt to build a Free Spirit team with a Psy focused Free Spirit team as well. And because we've got the two Gear 5s, and I think this honestly worked pretty well because I do think Psy this season is going to be good, especially if you come up against heavy focused powerhouse and driven teams because Wano Law can just debuff them permanently now. and it's not only for the first 40 seconds. So uh, Wano Law provides a lot of a lot more uh, usefulness in your Psy Free Spirit focus teams. And of course, we've got Odin and Gear 5 Luffy, Shanks and stuff like that. All the good stuff you love to see. And then, of course, I have pivoted my Slasher team from the previous one into using Cracker instead of 10th Anniversary Shanks. As for the bench, because Dex received level 5 CT speed increase, putting some Dex Slashes on here was almost like a no-brainer. Dalton and Pell both do some pretty serious damage, especially with a lot of the other buffs that you see on our squad. So if one of the units do go down, those units will be able to help out. And of course, having Brook one of the Straw Hat units to ensure that the full effects of Sanji and Zora are able to proc. Yeah. 
Moving on to our second match of day number two. And this time around, we're going to start things off with our side team. And we're going to go up against uh, this one right here, where the opponent does have a strength focus squad up the front. Their secondary team is kind of like a like a striker health cutting kind of kind of team. Um, but because the strength team has the key pillars of Kaido and Luffy being powerhouse units, Wano Law felt like a really good choice. And if we do get pretty lucky with characters like Odin, for example, we should have the capabilities of inflicting action bind to the opponent. You'll see here that we do get pretty lucky action binding Luffy and also action binding the Kobe. But this felt like a really good opportunity to use that burst skill just to ensure that we don't take damage from that Monkey D. Luffy. That's the only thing I was really concerned about. However, bringing in off the bench that Kuma, even if Kuma launches the special and he does knock something out, it's not the end of the world because we have some pretty good stuff on the bench and Luffy can revive too. So that really wasn't that big of a hassle and then we get to go ahead and use the free spirit team next free spirit is just extremely reliable it's not the most hardest hitting team out there but remember in grand party it's not about if you can completely knock out all of your opponent's characters it's literally just about outlasting them so making sure that i have more characters on my side of the field than my opponent when that clock hits zero and free spirit are very good at doing that with characters like Otama that can provide insane, consistent healing, characters like Zoro, which provides massive defensive components, and uh, with him and Luffy both having a revive mechanic is very valuable, Sanji to reduce our special CT, and then of course Nami Karina to ensure that my opponent are not launching their specials, it's just one of the best teams you can be using in Grand Party. <laughs> And now we go ahead and have a look at our final team of the video. So we're going to be using our slasher team first, moving into our side team after that, up against a pretty much randomly generated team so not really too much to worry about over the first couple of days things were a little dicey in day one with that 10th anniversary shanks trying to shoehorn him into a team because i wanted to try and see if the size cerebral buff to the gp burst skill was that big of a deal and i think it would be a big deal if you know the character had a more broken rumble or grand party skill but you know when you've got int or the Psy gear 5 luffy those are just the ones that you should be abusing because they're just such insane abilities but that's pretty much going to wrap it up for me towards the end of this video as well will be uh me using a red ticket so go ahead and uh, and stay tuned for that but i hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you guys did enjoy it make sure you go ahead and leave a like and if you want to stay up to date with all the content i post including more one piece treasure cruise content make sure to hit the subscribe button down below on that guys i'll see you guys within the next video Let's go.